This video is brought to you by mywayteaching.com. In this part, we are going to see about the position, path length, and displacement. So, what is this position, path length, and displacement? You will come to know in this particular part. So, you can see in this figure the position coordinate of a particle in motion at the time t1 is given by x1, y1, and z1. Isn't it? The position coordinates. You can see here this one. Okay. At T1, it is given by X1, T1 as well as Z1. So, the position of this point is with respect to X axis is given as Y1. With respect to Z axis, it is given as X1. And even here, you can see this Z1. So, the coordinates of this particular point A is x1, y1 and z1 and at the time t2 it is shifted to this point b and here you can see the coordinates as x2, y2 and z2. This shows the position of the particle with respect to the given frame of reference. This x, y, z is a frame isn't it? So with respect to this frame of reference we are identifying the particle's position. So, if all the three coordinates of a particle remain unchanged with time, the particle is considered at rest with respect to time in this frame. So, if all these particles remain at x1, y1, z1 only for all the time intervals like from t1 or t2 up to tn if it remains at this particular point only means then we can say this point a is at rest if any one of the coordinates changes with respect to time so in this case all the three coordinates they okay we can say x1 is changed to x2 y1 is changed to y2 and z1 is changed to z2 which means all the three coordinates are not same at the time t2 so in this case we can say the particle is in motion or it or in other words we can say it is in linear motion for example an object falling freely from the top of the tower isn't it that is also a kind of motion isn't it motion of a car along a straight road are the examples of motion so when two or three coordinates change with respect to time is when two or three coordinates change with respect to time means we can call that motion of a particle as two dimensional motion as well as if three coordinates change with respect to time means we can call that one as a three dimensional motion for example the earth revolving around the sun a striker moving over the carom board are the examples of two dimensional motions isn't it because that striker board is taking the reference it is in a plane that is that carom board itself is a plane for that striker ground isn't it a butterfly flying in the garden is an example of three dimensional motion it is having three dimensions for a butterfly in a garden if it is against a particular plane means we can call it as two dimensional like against a wall if it is something is there on the wall we can call that as a two dimensional one okay this is about the position of a particle to describe motion along a straight line we can choose an axis say x axis so that it coincides with the path of the object okay as we can see here this is a x axis so it coincides with the path of the object 
we then measure the position of the object with reference to a conveniently chosen origin say o here this point o is the reference point okay this using that reference point we'll measure all the other so this is a basically a reference point for us for measurement positions to the right of o are taken as positive so position to the right of o are taken as positive and the positions to the left of o they are taken as negative the position coordinates of point p and q if i consider two points this one the point p and then the point q so the position coordinates of this point p is given by plus 360 meter isn't it it is at 360 meter similarly q if i consider it is at plus 240 meter and similarly the position coordinate of this r is given by minus 120 meter so all these are measured with respect to point o then what is this path line yes you just consider i'll explain this with a example you just consider the motion of a car along a straight line so we choose the x axis again such that it coincides with the path of the car's motion so this is an x axis the origin of the axis as the point from where the car started so let us assume the car was at x is equal to 0 at t is equal to 0 so again we are taking the reference of this figure and o is the starting point of the car okay and the car was at x is equal to 0 when time was 0 this is the initial position and this p q and r they represent different positions of the car at different instants okay consider two cases of motion in the first case the car moves from o to p okay in the first case the car moves from o to p what is the distance covered by it yes the distance traveled by it is plus 360 meter isn't it the distance is called as path length and this distance is nothing but path length in the second case the car moves from o to p and then moves back from p to q so first the car moves from o to p and then it moves back from p to q so the total distance traveled by it is op minus pq isn't it and op is 360 and what about this pq so the total total distance traveled by this in the second case we'll consider the car is traveling from the from the point o to p first and then it moves back from p to q so the total path length covered by the car is op plus pq where op is given by 360 and pq is given by how much is yes, it is from 240 to 360 So two forty two three sixty means it is one twenty meter. So the total path length in this case is four eighty meter, and this path length is a scalar quantity, which means it has only magnitude, no direction. Now 
Now let's learn about displacement. It is very useful to, de to define another quantity called displacement. And this displacement is defined as the change in position. Let x1 and x2 be the positions of an object at the time t1 and t2. Then its displacement that is denoted by delta x in time delta t that is given by t2 minus t1 is given by the difference between the final and initial positions that is x2 minus x1. So this is the displacement. If x2 is the position, if I consider this x1 and x2 are the positions of an object at the time t1 and then at the time t2, then the displacement, okay, this displacement is uh, given by, that is uh, delta x, which is given by x2 minus x1. And this displacement is a vector quantity. It has both magnitude and direction. So in one, di one dimensional motion, there are only two directions possible. Means only forward, backward, upward, downward. And we can represent them with negative signs. So consider the same figure that I, I showed you. So in this case, let us consider the displacement of the car moving from O to P. So the displacement is delta x. So I told you it is uh, x2 minus x1, where x2 is final position, that is the point P. So the point P is at 360 meter. And the point x1 is the initial point, that is the point O, and it is 0. So the displacement is 360 meter again. Okay, the displacement has a magnitude of 360 meter and it is directed in the positive x direction as indicated by the plus sign. So it is, uh, it moves in the positive direction. So it is uh, plus 360 meter, we can write like this also. Okay, similarly the displacement of the car from P to Q if I consider then First, the initial position of the car, P to Q, if I consider, Q is X2, the final position is 240 and the initial position is 360, the value that we get is minus 120. So, the negative sign indicates the direction of the displacement, thus it is not necessary to use the vector notation for discussing motion of objects in one dimension. Okay, the magnitude of displacement may or may not be equal to the path length traversed by the object. So, here path length is just the, what we can say, the length traversed by an object. But displacement is a uh, difference between the final position and initial position. If I say, if I consider a circle and if the circle is moving from x1, and it is coming and reaching the same point, okay the same point that is also we can call it as x1 or x2. In this case the path length traveled by it is from x1 to x2 the object is traveling isn't it? So the path length is all this distance from x1 to x2 whereas displacement is x2 minus x1 but in this particular case the final position is same as that of the initial position. So x2 is nothing but x1 okay so the displacement is zero but the path traversed by it is not zero so that is the difference between displacement and yes path length
the magnitude of the displacement for a course of motion may be zero but the corresponding path length is not zero so this displacement it can be zero but the path length can never be zero okay that is one more thing we should keep it in our mind for example again if i consider the same example if car starts from o and goes to point p and then returns to o the final position coincides with the initial position and the displacement is zero okay however the path length of the journey is op plus pq that is 360 plus 360 720 meter but the displacement in this case is zero so now you got the difference between displacement and path length isn't it displacement can be zero but path length cannot be zero and this displacement is a vector quantity which is it is having both direction as well as magnitude okay this is all about the displacement